so welcome back to some more Pokemon Soul Silver. where last time we left for Ilex Forest and in the process getting, uh, got ourselves headbutts to get our new party member who is of a Heracross. Then made our way to Route 34 and ended off at the daycare center. And this time I have made our way back to Azalea Town because, uh, well, one, Apricorn, but I never came back to go and, well, talk to Kurt. He's had our single ball ready for a while, but I wanted to wait till this episode to actually come back and get it, so. Ah, just finished your Pokeball. Here. Thanks for the fast fall. Uh, fast fall? What? Fast ball, buddy. Just turned out great. So that's the nice thing. He'll take an infinite number of Pokeballs as long as you have Apricorns. I guess I'll uh, give him some black Apricorns, sure. They're not really useful for anything else. I mean, technically they are, but I don't really care. Anyways, I'll meet you guys back up to Route 34. I'm gonna buy a repel and all that, so I don't have to run into a bunch of encounters. Oh, uh, this guy has stuff for us, apparently. Shuck up berries. Is that really all you have? That sucks. Ugh. That's a thing. Mom likes to buy really bad items, and at least she gives you very exclusive berries, but they're completely pointless. I don't even remember what those berries do. Back to Route 34. One thing I want to mention is that off screen, I did grind card up to level 18, so there is that. I didn't want to level up or level her up too much because uh, I, I don't know. I don't like over leveling as much as, uh, well, for LPs, I should say. I also did not fight any of the trainers, meaning we got trainers to fight. And this picnicker, it, uh, well, she is very well worth your time to fight, so you will absolutely fight her. And thankfully, Card did get Aerial Ace, so yeah, Card is going to be a lot more helpful because uh, grinding on this route was kind of annoying because, well, Card's weak to the drowsies on this route and they all know confusion, but. Anyways, the special thing about this picnicker is that she has a Bulbasaur. How the hell did you get one? I do not know, but hey. If you need to see it for the Dex, there you go. Crit hit too, Jesus. Yeah, Card is uh, gonna be very overpowered. She is a, a, I mean, she's a Heracross, what do you expect? So, Aerial Ace once again. And there goes your really crappy hop up. You have a Bulbasaur, but yet two really... <laughs> other really bad grass types. I mean, I love Bulbasaur as much as the next guy, though. So yeah, she will want your number. Here's the thing about her, though. She is going to be one of your few sources of ever getting a Leaf Stone. For she can call you randomly and offer you a Leaf Stone. Definitely grab that, especially if you're going to use something like an Execute or something. Also, this cop here will only fight you at night time, so uh, I guess we'll never fight him, at least at least until I'm able to record at night, because I usually record either in the morning or in the middle of the day, so not anytime soon, at least. Psyduck, we won't be able to see you for a while, buddy. Uh, man, man you are higher level, holy crap. I guess one attack, and it doesn't really matter. The special thing with Aerial Ace, though, is that Aerial Ace can never miss. It has an infinite accuracy, so that's another really nice thing about having that move. And there goes Psyduck. Psy -i 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 duck. And you barely gave any XP. You suck. And you also give me your number. Cool. I'll take it. And I've yet to put the Slugma in the daycare because, uh, well... <laughs> IRL time it has yet to even get to the point where I've asked you guys for the nickname on the Slugma, so once I get the nickname, then I'll put the Slugma in the daycare just for funny stuff. Run away from the banana, or the chocolate banana dipped tape here. Embargo! Uh, basically makes the opponent not able to use items. Welcome to Goldenrod, and oh boy, there's a lot to Goldenrod. The radio tower in Goldenrod City is a landmark. They're running a promotional campaign right now. They'll modify your Poke Gear so it can also serve as a radio. There are a ton of things to Goldenrod. It is a big old city for a reason. First of all, we have a department store. 
yeah, not a Pokemon Center, a Pokemart. This is a whole mall. So first things first, we're gonna start small. Heading into this elevator and talking to the attendants. You can go to the basement floor because why would they let you down here? Eh, uh, not open a customer, so why did you let me here? Heading to the bottom here. You got this guy with a bunch of machokes. Machoke, help us move the container. This warehouse gets cleaned in a matter of seconds thanks to Machoke. The stuff on the ground is junk. Take it if you want. Okay, isn't this your storage? Got an Ultra Ball. The best variants of the normal Pokeballs. It's basically just a better Great Ball. Help the container. And then you want to wait for this guy to move back. Pretty nice. Down here is an Ether. That's a PP recovery item. Definitely save those. Do not spam those willy-nilly because they are very limited. You can only get those by breaking rocks, uh, <laughs> unfortunately. And burn heal. Heals burns. Case in point. You say anything different, guy? This where, uh, you say the exact same stuff as the other guy. Okay. That's all for us down here. So yeah, we have a lot to go through with just the department store. Like you say, Goldenrod is huge, so. Heading to the first floor. The first floor is your general walk-in, your delivery guy will be here and all that. It, there's really nothing to the first floor. Mom's good at bargain hunting. She's always bu she always buys stuff at lower prices. Kinda have to these days. I'm raring to shop again today. You are gonna run out of money. The department store has a decent selection, but some items are only available as game corner prizes. Oh, am I aware of that? Second floor has all your basic Pokemon uh, or Pokemon items such as balls, repels, potions. I think one special thing is yeah, the Poke Doll. It's essentially a free runaway, so if you want to buy one of those, you can. Uh, you're already selling Max repels. What the hell? Yeah, they have like the best of the best stuff here. It's really nice. I think for the bottom core, you actually sell. Yeah, you sell hyper potions and max potions already. And revives, dear god. The ladies at this department store even treat. Uh, greet, yeah, greet kids like me with respect. That's what I call professional. Fair enough. I got my Abra at the game corner. Now it's my best partner. You got gypped. The existence of this department store tells me that Goldenrod is a big city. The selection here is unmatched anywhere else. Yeah, no kidding. Third floor has battle items. Unless if you're doing like challenge runs or something like that, this is a, just a completely pointless floor. There's like nothing here. Uh, I'm really impatient. I use X-Speed in battle to speed up my Pokemon. Hey. When you battle, do you use X special? It's awesome. It really jacks up the special attack. Yeah, again, you find them out in the field too. I, I've never really used them. Hey, I love strong Pokemon. I feed them protein to crank up their attack. That gives you a hint of what 4-4 is. This is a IV boosting floor. All these items will boost the IVs of your Pokemon for their respective stats. Unless if you're competitive battling, I would say not worry about that at all. Iron adds uh, to your Pokemon's defense. I could have read the item description. <laughs> Some Pokemon evolve only through trading. I know of four. Machoke, Kadabra, Haunter, and um, Graveler. I heard there's others too. Yeah, the original four, and then uh, even more to go from there. Floor five. You can't rename a Pokemon you get in a trade. The name is a reflection of the original trainer's feelings for it. In which I hate, because sometimes... Well, if it's an in-game trade, they have stupid names. <laughs> On Sundays, a lady comes to check out Pokemon. She, can gi she even gives away TMs. Keep that m in mind for later. I collect Pokemon. Do you have a Drowsy? Want to trade it for my Machop? This is a chance to get an in-game trade for a Machop. In which I'll talk about here. Machop is a pure fighting type that becomes a powerhouse throughout its evolution. It's a weirdly tough Pokemon to find in this game as well, and can be a great uh, great member just for this gym. However, that uh, be aware that its final evolution is locked behind a trade, but in this trade, it does come holding the Macho Brace, which is a nice bonus. 
Along with that, if you can get it with the ability of no guard, it is quite overpowered. It makes it to where it can never miss, but Pokemon or opposing Pokemon can never miss it. So, it's a double-edged sword, but you give it some really powerful moves like Rock Slide or something like that, it can tear through everything. So, just keep in mind that if you want to fully have this thing at its peak, you have to trade for it. So, I'm not gra uh, going for this trade because I don't have a Drowsy on me and I don't care about the Macho Brace. There is a chance to grab a um, Machop later, but... Just keep in mind that that trade is there. Here, you can buy TMs. This is the TM Galore Floor. So, you got TM70, which is Flash. That's in case if you randomly used it or tossed it. This, I believe... Oh, God, I can't remember what 17 is. There's a lot of these. That's False Swipe. That's... Oh, God, I can't remember that name either. These two are Reflect and... Uh, light screen. That's what it is. This page, however, are really good moves. TM22 is Solar Beam. TM52 is, I believe, Focus Blast. TM38, that's Fire Blast. TM29 or 25, that is Thunder. TM14 is Blizzard. TM15 is Hyper Beam. So there are nice moves here if you want, and I would almost say to get Fire Blast for Quilava here because. It is a really good move, but I'm not spending my entire inheritance on it right now. The other slot, however, on Sundays, there will be a girl here, and will, she will give you TMs based on your Pokemon's happiness. So, if, she, if your Pokemon has max happiness or high happiness, she will give you TM27 Return, which I will still say is the best normal type move ever. What it does is, it's a physical normal type move that scales with your Pokemon's happiness, up to 250 power. Actually, I think it's 255. It is stupidly powerful. Frustration, on the other hand, is the opposite. It is a move that scales with how low your happiness on your Pokemon is, which honestly sucks because you're killing po uh, Pokemon more than you're getting killed. I guess it's nice if you somehow ran into a Paneri, because that thing actively hates people. And last four is a nothing four, but we have gambling. Oh, we love gambling. Oh my. So today, uh, today's prize is TM91 Repeat Ball or Berry. The nice thing with this is that each day is a different TM and you can constantly do this little drawing and eventually get all the items. I'm gonna do it once because I don't really care. Number three prize, yeah, Cherry Berry. So, if you want to know all the rewards, Sunday has TM02 Dragon Claw. I'll talk about all the TM uh, rewards. Monday has TM65 Shadow Claw. Tuesday, uh, you did say it was, yeah, TM91. That's Flash Cannon, which is really good if you're going to use something like a Magnemite later on. Wednesday is Charge Beam. Thursday is Drain Punch. Friday is Facade. And Saturday is Silver Wind. So, that's there if you want it. Do you listen to the radio? Which shows do you prefer? I like Buena's password. When I catch it, I take notes so I don't forget the password. That's why my Pokegear is full of scribbles. That is something important for later. <laughs> if you're tired, try the vending machines. Yeah, you have these vending machines, which, uh, give me, give me a lemonade, sure. Can't lemonade drop down. Now, am I lucky or am I gonna still have really bad luck? No, okay. There's a chance that it will drop down an additional whatever you buy, so it's nice if you want to gamble for that. I'd rather just use potions. Tsss! Elevator going down. And weird to see elevator attendants, but then again, I mean, <laughs> everything's automated, so why would you ever need them? So, exploring more of Goldenrod, I know there's the giant flashing building right there, but I'll talk about that more in a, in a later bit. <laughs> I got in trouble for playing in the basement of the department store. Again, why do they let people down there? Is that man in black dressed up like a Team Rocket member? How silly. They built a new radio tower to replace the old creaky one. So this is the radio tower. What do you want, you pest? Scram! What the hell, man? Eh, whatever. Heading over to the east, you want to head into this house. 
for this girl is actually really nice. If you're using a Zubat or a Togepi, she will actually tell you the happiness level of your Pokemon. So, if you need to know how far along your Pokemon is, there you go. She's really nice for that. Heading south here, you have this building, which I can't read from the side. Bike Shop Goldenrod Branch. The world is a cycling path. Heading in here. Uh, I opened a branch here, but I can't sell my bicycles. Why is that? Could you ride a bicycle and advertise for me? Sure. Give me your name and phone number and I'll loan you a bike. Free bike, I'll take it. So, I guess talking more about key items, because we haven't, well, we you actually we haven't even used the old rod. We can register up to two items at once. So, one with the touch screen and one with passing Y. So, hitting Y gives us the bike. Uh, did not mean to go into that building. Just, unlike the bike in Earthbound, the bike is actually really helpful in this game. It's just a faster running. So, there's that. It is quite uncontrollable a little bit, but it's fast. That's all you need it for. The man at the tent rates your Pokemon names. You can even rename your Pokemon. Fair enough. Oh, here comes a bit I am not looking forward to. The Game Corner. This sucks. So, this in Japan were a bunch of slot machines. They, it was changed for the North American release and I guess in the West in general. Uh, I hate this. First of all, talk to this guy. My name is Mr. Game. My heart pounds with excitement when people enjoy my coin game. In fact, that's what I live for. You look like quite a challenger. Why don't you play my coin game? You get fabulous prizes if you manage to collect a lot of coins. Alright, here's your coin case. Thankfully, the guy just gives it to you instead of having to go on a scavenger hunt like in Diamond and Pearl. Show me how you play and my heart will pound with excitement. Uh, okay. So, instead of slots, where it's just complete RNG stupidity, we have Minesweeper. So the way this works is the numbers on the tops of the squares here, like we'll go with the top row here. This has two at the top, three at the bottom next to a Voltorb. The whole gimmick here is you don't want to hit a tile with a Voltorb on it, and you want to earn points by collecting the tiles that have points on them. So in this case, this is telling you that there's two points on the top row with three Voltorbs in that row. Basically meaning that this entire row is pointless because there's only ones. Ones don't give you uh, more points. It's multiplicative. So once you get the one, you're going to want twos and threes. So this row, however, is completely safe because it's only six points and zero Voltorbs. Meaning that is completely safe and there's, well, four ones and one two. This column is also safe because there are zero Voltorbs. And this column is also safe because there are, uh, well, zero Voltorbs. Now here comes the gambling bit. So, from here you kind of have to figure out where the other tiles are without hitting the Voltorb. So, this definitely has, actually this has, okay, this has nothing we want to want because there's only one Voltorb and four points. So that means all of these has to be ones. Uh, same, oh god, not with this one though, okay. I'm gonna guess it's this one? Oh god, this one, why did I do that? <laughs> why did I do that? I just said that that row was completely pointless, it was probably the bottom one, yeah. I don't like this game at all, simply because I have the worst luck with Voltorb Flip. I have never liked this game mode, I think it sucks, so, uh, like, for example, Okay, I got the three point there. So that means this column's pointless, this column's, or this row's pointless. Uh, if these were just ones, I think there's a two. There has to be a two left in there. I'm gonna guess it's this one. No. Gamble. Uh, oh, okay, but that means that, is that how it adds up? Three, four, okay, yeah, it does. Uh, just, I don't know what else to. Okay, so nothing in this row. Nothing in this row, which means there has to be, oh god, I'm gonna guess it's this. Okay, there's that. And then, where else is anything else? So three, 
Okay, so there's a one in this. Don't have to worry about this. Four, so don't worry about this. An alternative thing you can do too is you can back out and just save the coins that you did gain, but you probably don't want to do that too much. Uh, actually, what the crap else is there to grab from this? Because two, one, one, one. Oh, wait, there's another two up in there because there's two Voltorbs. Oh, God. Uh, I'm guessing this. Ugh. Okay. The most likely would be here or here. There's no more left in this. I'm gonna guess this one? Okay, I actually got lucky. So yeah, it's completely RNG if you run into a Voltorb and in later levels there's rows and columns where there are Voltorbs in all of them. I don't like it, it is a grind fest, it takes forever to get through and I just hate it. The reason for ever going through the pain that is the coin minigames is you can exchange for prizes. Prizes that actually get you Pokemon here. So, for Soul Silver players, you can actually get Sandshrew, which is normally exclusive to. Actually, uh, actually, this is not exclusive. One, or no, it is exclusive. I'm stupid. Normally, it's exclusive to Harkold, but you are able to get one through the game corner here, which is a pretty nice commodity. A whole new Pokemon here is Dratini. Dratini is a pseudo legendary for a region. Uh, a region for a reason. It is a pure dragon type for now that turns into a dragon flying type and is notoriously busted. It has a monstrous physical attack with good special attack, basically making it anything you want. Along with that, it has a massive move pool, making it stupidly unpredictable. At this point in the game, it's also stupidly overpowered because it comes with Dragon Rage, which instantly takes off 40 HP on a Pokemon. However, Unless if you want to drive yourself insane, or really like the Minesweeper game, I would not recommend it here. There's a better place for it to get it, and with less RNG bullshit. So there's that. The other guy will sell you, well, technical, uh, technical, yeah, technical machines, and also held items. <sighs> I hate that these three are locked behind this. Sword Stance is also locked behind this. There's some really good TMs here, but grinding the coin. I have grinded the coins here before for Ice Beam. It's not helpful. It's not worth it. Held items, however. Again, more battle items. The Silk Scarf, however, I would almost just say never get, because there's a chance that your mom can actually buy it for you. That's the reason why I've saved my money with her. Waiting for a, sil a Silk Scarf from her. Getting out of this cesspool. I just, I do not like the game corner. I Maybe it's just I'm really unlucky, but I digress. Anyways, now that we have gone through all that, we've pretty much gone through all the top section stuff, there's still more people to talk to and more things to explore, so next time on Pokemon Soul Silver, we'll continue to explore Goldenrod. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. <laughs>